Welcome to IGN's Greatest Minds. In this four part series, we'll show you how Minecraft, yes, Minecraft, can put you on the path to becoming a fully fledged engineer. But since I have no idea what I'm doing, I've invited Wild Engineering, a redstone specialist, to build us up. See what I did there? We'll kickstart your engineering journey by teaching you how to build a binary adder. It may not sound like much, but have you ever built one? I haven't. Brought to you by the US Air Force. There are many ways to serve in uniform and out, full-time or part-time. Learn more at airforce.com. Hi everybody, I'm the Wild Jarvi from Wild Engineering here to show you how you can use redstone to create basic logic gates like these, and then use those building blocks to make something much more complex. By the end of this series, you'll have the tools to build something truly amazing, and I don't want to give away too much just yet, so let's first break down what we're covering today. In this video, we'll be learning about base systems, binary logic gates, which are a building block for digital circuits, binary addition, and then building a ripple carry adder, which is also known as an RCA. These tools are essential in understanding the concepts for our upcoming episodes. Now for the uninitiated, redstone dust acts as our wiring in Minecraft. It has a maximum distance of 15 blocks and it acts as a logical OR, meaning by itself it will output a signal as long as one of the inputs is active. There are tons of other components you can use to change how redstone inputs and outputs work, like redstone targets, repeaters, torches, and more. Okay, now that we're familiar with redstone items, let's talk about base systems. There's two main types we'll be working with in our builds. Base 10, also known as decimal, is the main system we use every day. It has 10 values, 0 through 9, and these values can be multiplied by weights or powers of 1, 10, 100, and so on, which we can visualize on these columns. For example, 10 to the 0 makes 1, 10 to the 1 makes 10, and 10 squared makes 100. So base 10 takes those values of 0 through 9 and multiplies them by those weights. So let's say I wanted to get 325. How would we make that happen? Well, we need 5 1s, 2 10s, and 3 100s. From left to right, that would mean we're taking 3 times 10 squared, plus 2 times 10 to the 1st, plus 5 times 10 to the 0, which equals 325. That was base 10. Now let's talk about base 2, which is also known as binary. Base 2 uses two values, 0 and 1. These can be multiplied by weights that use powers of 2. Like decimal, we start with the power of 0. Anything to the power of 0 equals 1, then 2 to the 1 makes 2, and then 2 to the 2 is 4. So let's say I want to make the number 5, and I can only take one of these columns or none of them. I know I need one 4, so I can put a 1 in the 2 to the 2 column. We don't need a 2, so we can place a 0 in the 2 to the 1 column. And then we need a 1, so we can place a 1 in the 2 to the 0 column. So that tells us that 5 in binary is 1, 0, 1. Now if you see 0, 1, 0, 1, or 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, those are also 5. The amount of leading zeros doesn't change our final result. Let's say we're trying to get to the number 3. That would mean I need a 2 and a 1, meaning in binary, that would be a 0, 1, 1. Base 2 is a little less complex than base 10, since you either have a column or you don't. This makes computing using base 2 a lot simpler. With the base systems all squared away, we're moving on to logic gates. These are the basic building blocks for creating circuits that give direction and a set of rules for an input and an output. We'll start off with a NOT gate. These are built by using a torch, which acts as the gate itself. When you power the gate, the output is the opposite state as the input. So if the input is a 1, the output becomes a 0, and vice versa. If the input is 0, the output becomes a 1. Next we're looking at OR gates. This will have two inputs and one output. In this case, the output will be true when any one of the inputs is active, or if both are. Now we can create any other type of gate by adding our NOT gate on either the inputs or the output of our OR gate. So let's try that out. First, let's put the NOT gate on the output of the OR gate. This is what we call a NOR gate, which has its output on by default, which is an inverted logical output compared to our OR gate. This means that the output will be off whenever any one of the inputs is active, or if both are. Let's try it with the inputs inverted. You'll notice that the output is on by default, but this time only turns off if both inputs are true. We call this kind of logic gate a NAND gate. Next. For an AND gate, we'll use three torches as inverters, and you'll notice that the output is only true if both inputs are true. Now we're going into gates that are a little bit more complicated. We're going to modify the OR gate and make it so that when you have both inputs on, the output turns off. That's called an exclusive OR gate, or XOR for short, and it's what allows us to do a bunch of things like addition. To make that, let's create an alpha repeater, which is an inverter that feeds an inverter, which in turn creates a repeater. We'll put two of them next to each other, which makes them work like an OR gate. Now we want to find a way to cancel the output signal to act as if we added a third input, making it so when both inputs are true, the output is disabled. We can do that by adding an AND gate to cancel the output when both inputs are on. You can place torches in several different spots, but for now we'll keep them up top for simplicity. Now the output is only active when one input or the other is true, but not when both or neither are. Finally. 
XNOR gates are a tool we'll be using later down the line. We'll start with an infinity sign layout, placing our repeaters and torches, and then we're going to use a slab or a transparent block like glass to move the signal up and down. This top part will act like our AND portion, while the middle repeaters create OR which we can turn into NOR by adding a torch at the end to invert the signal. We'll add a block and OR the outputs of NOR and AND to create XNOR. I know that was a lot at once, but what's important to know is that this creates a two-tick synchronous machine. Since it takes one tick here and there, and one tick there and there, which OR there, both of which OR there at the same time. All that makes it so that the output is only off when one input or the other, but not both, are enabled. Let's add some lamps on the input so we can see it in action. If we enable one, the output turns off. The same effect if we enable the other. But if we do both, the output is back on, the exact opposite of the XOR gate. Now when we have both inputs enabled, we can also use our AND gate that comes from the bottom, which will be useful later on in our tutorial. Now that we have our building blocks for circuits all squared away, let's put them to use. But first, let's talk about binary addition and how it works. Here we have a simple grade school layout where we can have two numbers at the top and an area at the bottom for our results. We're going to have a 4-bit number plus a 4-bit number. As you can see, since we have those numbers at the top here, 8, 4, 2, 1. So let's try an example. I'm going to add 3 plus 5, showing off my 1s as blue and my 0s as gray. So here we have 3 plus 5. Let's add it. Starting from the right, 1 plus 1 equals 2. But we can't write a 2 at the bottom, so we're going to put a 0 and carry the 1 over. On the next line, 0 plus 1 equals 1, 1 plus 1 equals 2, which means we're going to put another 0 as a result and then carry the 1 over. Next line is the same deal. 1 plus 0 equals 1, 1 plus 1 equals 2, meaning we'll put another 0 and carry the 1 over. Finally, we'll get to 0 plus 0 plus 1, which equals 1, so we'll place a 1 in that result. All that together shows us that 3 plus 5 equals 8, and the leftmost column is equal to 8, so the addition worked out as expected. Now it's time to see how we can build this using hardware. We'll need to detect when both of the input bits are true, like our AND gate does. Plus, we'll also need an AND gate for our carry bit so we know if we need to carry again. Let's just say we had a case where we're adding 0011 and 011 instead. Instead, we would have a carry, and then a 1 plus a 1 plus a 1, which equals a 1 and a carry. The next one would be a 0, and then a 1. So we can see that 7 plus 3 is equal to 10, which is also true. Lastly, we also need to know when to create a sum bit. We know how to carry, and when we get the AND gate between the inputs, or the carry, and the sum of the previous inputs. But how do we get the sum? That's an XOR, since it gets one input or the other, but when it gets two inputs, we want it to carry over to the next column. So let's see it in action. To start building our adder, we'll replicate our XOR that we built earlier. This one is pretty simple to remember, since you can think of it as an X and modify the ends. We're adding some torches at the front as well, and if we extend the front, we can chain this build into another gate if we wanted to. Our inputs will be the switches on this end, but we're going to need to build something to carry on to the next. We'll need something to chain into our output. We can build that like this, making that signal able to be blocked. But we put this torch up here because we want that signal there, but we don't want it to OR with the signal on the other side, so we can block that by adding another block next to it. Next, we can build another XOR over here. Remember, it looks like an X with some modifications at the ends, and this time, we can leave the torches there since we don't need a carry, connect them with redstone dust, and we'll get the sum output of our ripple carry adder. The last thing we need for this one is the AND gate that we mentioned previously which we can add by placing a torch here. We can set up a carry out and our carry in bits, and we can add some lamps for our inputs as well. So we can do 1 plus 0 equals 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, and 1 plus 1 plus the previous input is 3. Everything is working, so I'm going to use world edit to select these portions and stack them three times since we already have one, and you'll see that the outputs chain perfectly into the input of the next with very minimal effort. Pretty simple. So now, we can label the inputs A0 and B0. We're labeling them this way since they're 2 to the 0, which is a value of 1. Next, A1 and B1, which have a value of 2. Then A2 and B2, and finally A3 and B3, which is 2 to the 3. So we have our 8s, 4s, 2s, and 1s. So if I wanted to make a number 5, I would switch on A0 and A2, which is 4 plus 1. If I wanted the value 3, I'd switch on B0 and B1. So now you'll see the output is 8, which is the same answer we got when we used our chalkboard example previously. Let's clear the adder and flip all the A inputs to 1, meaning a total of 15, and we flip the carry in. Watch what happens to the output. This is why it's referred to as a ripple carry adder. You'll notice there is a bit of delay there. That's because this AND gate takes two ticks to realize it needs to turn on, which changes the next AND gate that also needs two ticks to realize it has to turn on, so on and so forth. So the biggest issue with this adder is that as you add more bits, it takes a long time to produce your results. So how can we make this more efficient? You'll need to tune into the next episode to find out. 
Thank you so much to Wild Engineering for teaching us the basics of base systems, how logic gates work, and how to use the binary system with a logic gate to create an adder. This is all just the beginning of your adventure in exploring the possibilities of redstone and real world circuitry. In our next episode, we'll be adding onto our adder to be more efficient, as well as pose another question like, can we make this binary device easier to read? Find out more next time on IGN's Greatest Minds.